Hello and welcome back to the Julie Kenya podcast. I know you guys have been like, where is she? What is she doing? Well, she's back and I have taken a break, but a lot has happened in the middle of my break. So first of all, for the Truly Kenya podcast, which will be coming out every Tuesday, um, we now have a team. So it's just not me doing pretty much everything. Obviously not the recording and the audio, but the planning of the guests and organizing all that. So now uh, the Truly Kenya podcast has a... Um, it has Jen and Jazz from Press LA, the PR, and Jen runs a very tight ship. So she handles everything, which allows me just to show up and do what I do. And then we're taping, if we're in LA, we are at Paper Crane Studios now, and I don't have to worry about cameras. I don't have to worry about audio. Like this has really turned into a real fucking production. Okay, so I'm having a good time with it. I have some great episodes coming out for you guys, but I've missed you and I hope you've missed me. Your bestie, your auntie, your sister, your friend. And if I'm not your favorite, I should be your favorite. Okay, because I'm probably the most loyal. All right, but um, I did miss you guys. And so while I was away, we I was still working on getting the show where I wanted it to be. I'm just trying to create the best, um, the really the best podcast that I can create. And what I realized is that I can't do it all myself. And so um, I, I got help. And I think that often in life, we do need a little help. We cannot do everything by ourselves. So I think it's going to be a much better podcast. Now that I do have help, I'll also be filming still in Oakland, the Bay, um, and at Skyline Studios, which I also love. I know you guys want to know. So I'm just going to quickly touch on some things that you guys are constantly asking me. Yes, I am finally divorced. I know two years, but we're finally divorced, um, which is good because I feel like I don't have a weight on my shoulders about what I do, who I do it with, and all of this sort of stuff. So um, divorce has been good. Um, I am dating. I have had sex, and it was fucking awesome, okay? And life is... Life is good, you know. Um, now that I am divorced, I can um, honestly, when I think about like what mistakes did I make in terms of the marriage, I'm sure, listen, I'm sure he's going to have his side. I have my side. You know, we should have been writing a book together called Here's What Really Happened. And then like we both have like I do one side and then you know how you flip the book over and turn over and then he'll have his version of what he thinks happened. And we'll just put an asterisk, an asterisk on my side as like the truth. Right. But um, so, yeah, so the divorce is fine. Life is moving on. I don't really feel like there's a lot. Um, I'm sure I made mistakes and you guys can be the judge of some of that. Um, but I don't have any regrets. So at this point, there's nothing I would take back or do differently when it comes to the divorce or maybe the things that I said. Um, you know, I, I have gone through therapy, which was really good for me, um, in terms of making sure I'm not carrying some baggage into new relationships. Um, I'm not bitter. I'm not mad. Uh, I want everybody to be happy because I'm happy. And um, someone told me I'm very, very, very optimistic. I'm a very optimistic person. And I think that that is true. Um, so I know life is going to be good because I deserve a good life. I think I'm good to, I try to be good to everybody. Um, so I'm not worried about anything like that. And in terms of bitter, I love men. I still love men. So I'm not bitter towards men. and I'm not mad at the relationship didn't work or I'm not even mad at him. Um, you know, because, listen, okay, listen. You 
cannot control what other people do, okay? You can control your reaction to what someone may do. You can control how you act in a situation, but you can't control other people. So I was never caught up in trying to control who he was or what he did, right? In fact, I told him, I think he should lean into all of the cheating because there's some really funny stories. Like people will walk away like, damn, she was dumb or she let that happen. But some of the stories are actually really, really funny. Um, and if I can laugh, you can laugh. You know, some of it is kind of fucked up, but it's, it's funny to me because I don't care about that part of it. Um, so I do think he's talking about it a little bit on stage or he's talking about it more um, and being honest about it, which is really okay with me. Um, and in terms of the bitterness or the madness that I don't have is I show up authentically in, in all my relationships, even since the marriage. Well, I haven't even had a lot of relationships since the marriage, but I show up in my relationships authentically. So I love to love. I'm a nurturer. I'm a caregiver. Um, and I don't see myself ever allowing any situation, any of my relationships, any man to change, change that about me, like to get me to a point so much where I am resenting men or anything like that, because it's who I am and that's who I like being. And, you know, getting to know the me before being married or before having kids, um, she's still there and I still like her. So she's still around, okay? And she gonna be here forever. Um, but in this podcast, we're gonna talk about what my dating life is like and, you know, um, you know, things that we should expect. And women are not always right. I'm not always right. I'm only right like 99.9% .9 of the time, okay? So yes, I am not always right. I do have flaws, although not many. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know if I, I, I mean, I'm sure I do. I mean, I'm sure I have some flaws. I can't think of any right now, but I'm sure I do. But we're gonna have a good fun time on this journey of, you know, finding new love, dating, um, just like being on my own. I have not like been on my own for so many years. We're going to talk about the good stuff, the bad stuff. And um, it's just open. I'm still an open book. I'm just an open book with a new background. Okay. And um, I'm just trying to think. Another thing I do get a lot of questions about, you know, did do I take any of the blame? And I think like I just spoke, like people gonna do what they wanna do. So I don't take any, any blame about anything. I think people will react and even I, you know, my reaction to an incident or an action, I mean, it's just, you know, it's on me, you know, whether it's negative or positive, it's on me, but we're gonna have fun. Um, by the time you see this, I am going to be in London and Paris. Yes, I'm going to see Beyonce during the first leg of this tour. And I will also see her again in August. And I'll be able to tell you guys if she, by August, if she's doing fewer dances, you know, because she is older and still awesome. But you know, your as you get older, your knees get older too. So I cannot wait to see if there's a difference between the shows. But yes, I will be in London um, and Paris. And Paris to me, um, like in my mind, I'm really romanticizing it, which means it won't work out the way I want it to. Like I've bought some beautiful dresses I think that will look great in a Parisian marketplace, um, farmer's market, vintage town or whatever. Um, so they're very, very beautiful. Um, very Tuscany, like wine country that you probably seen, a, seen on a movie. So I'm so excited. I have like, the dress is beautiful. I bought my first red dress. I'm gonna take lots of pictures. Now I don't wanna get too excited because the last time I had like a vision of what I was gonna look like, um, I it didn't work out for me well. So when I was a little girl, I saw this picture of 
um, it was an actress named Bo Derek. I don't know if she was an actress or a model or something. So the picture I saw, she had braids. She was a white lady. She had some braids and she was on this horse and she had a bikini. And I just saw it like in a record store or something. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And so later, um, this had to be like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I was in the Caribbean. They had horseback riding that was going to go on the beach like Bo Derek. So I was like, oh my God, I got to do it. I got to do it. So I had the perfect bikini picked out. You know, I had vacation hair. So it was just wavy and, you know, kind of pretty, uh, messy, but, but still pretty. And, um, and I had like an extra set of clothes, you know, just in case. So I get to the place to ride this horse in my bikini on the beach and in the water and just, you know, hair flowing. And you have to wear long pants. You couldn't even wear a bikini. And then they made you wear like, um, like a helmet. It was like a styrofoam, dirty helmet. Like you would put on a baby, like if you was trying to shape the baby's head or maybe if you have a problem with like neck control um, or whatever. So needless to say, it was not sexy, okay? It was so unsexy and if I can find a picture, I'm gonna post it because it is so, I don't look like I need to be on that horse. I look like I need to be str obviously strapped up or str whatever, it, it's something else, not on a horse on a beach, okay? So, but anyways, I did it. It wasn't what I thought. And now when I'm thinking of Paris and my Parisian outfits and my wove, beautiful woven bags and my pretty little flats as I'm walking around shopping, um, something's going to fuck it up. I don't know what, but something is, you know, I'm probably going to be the only one dressed like that. Be like, you should be in Tuscany. You should be in wine country. country. This is not how we dress in Paris, okay? So I don't know, but it will probably go awry. But I'm going to stick to these Parisian dresses, and it better be warm because they're all sort of sleeve sleeveless with um, a couple of them have a lot of cleavage. But I'm just so excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. So... Um, I just wanted to jump on really quick. We got some great guests coming on for you guys this week. I mean, excuse me, for this season of the Truly Kenya podcast. And I'm just happy to be back. And I really, really missed you guys. And I just want to thank you in advance for being so supportive. You guys have been my producers of this show for so long, telling me what I need to do, how I need to do it. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the likes on YouTube. I appreciate the follows on YouTube. Um, I, I just appreciate you. I appreciate you allowing me to start and stop. But we're on one right now. So we're not stopping, okay? Um, but I don't want you to, to think like I didn't notice um, or... I'm not grateful because I'm both grateful. I do notice and I'm super duper appreciative. And you guys get to see what the rest of my life looks like and the things that I am working on. And I'm excited to share it with you. And I hope somebody can use all the shit that I've been through um, as just motivation to keep it moving, keep it going. Um, it's gonna get better, I promise you life gets good. So if you are going through something, trust me, it's going to get better. And with that, I just want to say I missed you guys. And she's back. All right. That's it. Tuesday, next Tuesday, you be here. Wherever you listen, YouTube, your favorite podcast platform, because we're back. All right, you guys. Thanks. Bye.